Hey everyone, welcome to episode 242, Escapism. Welcome to the Harmony in the Home podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Hutchison. I'm a counselor, a life coach, and most importantly, an imperfect mom doing this work right along with you. And my goal on our podcast is to go from chaos to calm, feel less frazzled and have more fun within your four walls to have more harmony in your home. Oh, that sounds like a fun word. Sounds like I'm a magician. So before I start, I want to talk to you about pocket coaching, which I've talked the last couple weeks about, where you and I can talk on either Voxer, Telegram, or WhatsApp, and you can give me specific examples of things that you're struggling with, and then I will Voxer you back, or Telegram you back, or WhatsApp you back, of different examples that have happened in my life or what you can try, or try this, or try that. Because a lot of times when you're leaving me boxers or you're leaving me messages, I can hear a lot of the unconscious thinking that's going on. And so I want you just to ramble and just give me a stream of consciousness because that is where the answers lie. It's in the unconscious thinking that we don't know that we even have. And so having someone else to hold the space and hear your unconscious thinking is so powerful and it's more on the go. And then I can share more personal stories that I can't share on the podcast because the people in my examples don't really want to be on the podcast and I don't really blame them. They're not as wide open like I am. Sometimes I'm like, am I too wide open? And then I have a vulnerability hangover the next day after I overshare. So if you're interested in signing up, email me at coachingkelly at AOL.com and just write pocket coaching and we'll go over the details and get you all signed up for that. So today we're talking about escapism and escapism is very common. We talk a lot about it in the beginning of the podcast called buffering. Escapism we all do to a certain extent and it's part of the human experience and it's very normal to have escapism because we don't want to be conscious all the time. It's exhausting to be conscious all the time. And so it's a way to kind of like numb out, or it's a kind of way to check out on the human experience for a little bit. And sometimes it can be very positive. Like you can escape through meditation, escape through exercise. You can escape through reading a book. You can escape through listening to music. You can escape sometimes um, doing chores is very comforting. And so there's positive escapism, but escapism is a habitual diversion of the mind to purely imaginative activity or entertainment as an escape from reality or routine. Now, I don't want to demonize escapism. I don't want to demonize buffering. It's not all bad. I just gave you a lot of positive examples. The way that you know that it's not working for you is that if it has a net negative, when you're done with it, where you've lost out on productivity, where you're not, you're doing it to escape versus as a, almost like a reward for getting all the stuff done, or just to kind of give yourself a break. If you're ever overdoing anything, because yeah, exercise is a positive escape, but if you're exercising for hours upon hours in the morning and then hours at night, that's not really a positive escapism. So only you know, and you know how to find the Goldilocks balance of if you're reading all day and then your kids are eating crackers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you're ignoring them. And you're just like, well, Kelly said escapism is positive. I can read a book, so I don't have to check into my family. Finding that balance of allowing yourself to escape and allowing yourself to engage at the same time is where you're going to find that that sweet spot, so to speak. A positive escape for me is definitely pickleball. I love playing pickleball. I escape and it's so much fun. And I all the game run goes so fast that you have to only focus on the game. So it's a way to escape. Now, if I'm playing eight hours a day and I'm not picking up my kids up from school, that's not a positive escape. So you can kind of see the difference of a pot. You can take a positive, any positive escape and turn it into something negative because if it's too much, that's why Goldilocks is always a good way to kind of determine whether it's gone too far, so to speak. I like to escape into true crime. I, I talk about true crime all the time because it's definitely escapism for me. And I have to keep my eye on it that I'm not escaping into all these other cases and trials. And, and it was a way that my dad and my sister bonded when he was here. And so I find myself doing that more because it was such a way that we bonded. And so it kind of makes me honor his memory because he loved it so much. And there were so many cases we were following. So I have to keep my eye on it that I'm not overly true crime. And I'm just fascinated by the human experience. And I'm fascinated by the mind of a criminal mind. I swear I could be like Penelope from Criminal Minds of just studying the mind of a criminal. Like, why did they do this? What, what was their childhood like? Never a justification, but more of like an understanding so we can prevent it for the future. Just that knowledge is just so powerful. 
so bad ways for escapism. And escapism is just, you don't want to feel, feel a human emotion. That's a tricky one. And that's a normal thing to do. Tricky emotions are very hard. And so the reason why I like to teach kids how to feel tricky emotions and not to be afraid of them and teach them strategies and teach them how to honor their tricky emotions and not run from them and not put them in time out is because the tricky emotions are going to come whether they like it or not as we know as adults. And so why not teach them how to handle them so we don't put them in the timeout so then they're not escaping from their life when they're older. They're like, oh, this is a tricky emotion. I know what this feels like. I felt this before. This is sadness. This is fear. This is anxiety. This is jealousy. This is embarrassment. This is melancholy. I felt this before. This is part of the human experience. What happens is when we're put in timeout, we're putting our kids in timeout, when they become a 34, 44, 54, and they have a tricky emotion come out, if they're getting in trouble when they're younger and going to time out for their tricky emotions, what are they going to do when they're 34, 44, 54? When those tricky emotions come up, they're going to put themselves in an adult timeout, i.e. escapism, i.e. buffering, i.e. it could be overeating, it could be over drinking, it could be over social media, it could be over gambling, it could be over gaming, it could be over vaping, it could be over porning, it could be over smoking pot. It could be over smoking cigarettes. It could be over anything. And when I say over, I mean overindulging. So when we understand escapism and why we do it, that's when I tell people, sit with your feelings, feel your feelings. That's why crying is so powerful. Laughing is so powerful. It's a way to get the emotions out of your body. Otherwise you feel stuck and it feels stagnant because a lot of us have never been taught how to feel our feelings. So when we can sit with the emotions of our kids when they're tricky and difficult and hard, then we're like, oh, this is a human experience. I can help my kids. And through that, you can reparent yourself to help yourself feel those tricky emotions. So being aware of escapism and be conscious of it and almost planning your escapism. Like I plan my true crime because if I don't, I will do true crime more than I need to. So I know that escape is coming. And that's why I love block planning and block scheduling so much. And the Monday hour one that we've talked about how you build in your life and you create your life. And then you build in these breaks and you build in the escapes, you build in your downtime, you build in your rest time. So you can actually escape and enjoy your, when you're doing escapism versus feeling guilty and shame. And choosing those healthy things to escape with and knowing that if you're over drinking or over smoking, you don't want to plan that where you're getting drunk every night and saying, oh, well, I plan my drunkness. It's like, no, I'm going to do this instead, a positive way to escape, not feel guilt about it. And it's almost like a reward for a hard earned escape. And then you can enjoy it versus escaping with social media, let's say, and you're escaping with social media, but none of the tasks for the day have been done. You've been doing it as a stalling procrastination then you're not really enjoying it because you're just thinking about all the things you have to do versus doing the things you have to do and building in throughout the day these different mini positive escapes to reward yourself and not have guilt. And you can honestly relax without guilt and shame. And the best part about this is once you learn how to do it, guess who you get to teach? Your little ones that are living in your four walls and you all will have so much more harmony. I love you guys and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey mamas, thanks for listening. If you had any ahas, clicks, or those lightning bolt moments while listening, you have to check out my free parenting bootcamp where we take all of this to the next level and we try to create even more awakenings for ourselves so that we can connect more with our kids and never yell at them again. You can sign up at www.coachingkelly.com and if you really want to fill up my love cup, Send me an email of what your aha was, what your click was, what was that lightning bolt moment while you were listening. I want nothing more in life than for you to have harmony in your home and to learn how to be an imperfect mom like me, which allows your kids to be imperfect too, each and every day. Thanks for listening.